Over three and a half million people in the UK claim disability benefits. The technical term for this is Personal Independence Payment, or PIP. Most of you would be forgiven for not knowing what PIP is. To help you understand, two people who've been through the process have agreed to share their stories. My name is Judith Ellis and the reasons why I applied for PIP is because my DLA was going to be stopped. I'm Richard Smith and I applied for PIP because uh, I have a lifelong developmental disability called autism. First of all, I suffer from a mental illness called schizophrenia, which gives me side effects which I suffer from. For example, sedation and slurred speech. And this lasts for three days. And I have anxiety attacks as well. Some of the problems I, I faced that, um, that meant for me, that led to me sort of needing to apply for PIP, um, they, they all contributed to me being autistic. I can't really prepare meals properly. I can barely open a tin of beans without getting my roommate to, to help me do it. I, it, it, it. Even dressing yourself properly. I didn't start buying my own clothes until I was like 15. And even before then I was extremely fussy with a man. I'd often just sort of literally wear the same clothes for like six months on end. These videos will help you see what Judith and Richard went through. Personal independence payment, otherwise known as PIP, replaces disability living allowance by government decree. To be eligible for PIP, you must first prove that you have a disability and thus a legitimate need for support. Our example is Henry. He wants to find out if he is eligible for PIP. He wants to know what PIP is, what it does, its history, its reception, and criticisms. Henry suffers from chronic muscular problems, leaving him wheelchair bound. He has psychological issues which affect his daily social interactions. His back problems make getting around a particular task. He cannot access a car, and he struggles to prepare meals. These are considerable disabilities, and by all accounts, make Henry eligible for personal independence payments. During the assessment, from what I remember, they, um, they sat me down and they started asking me questions about like, um, how, how I cope with sort of different challenges, like how I cope with like, sort of mobility, how I cope with sort of getting basic transport. They asked me to give them examples. Like There was one example with them asking me, how do I cope with getting a bus to town? Um, then there was another time when they asked me how do I do for financial management and I told them bluntly I'm terrible at it. I think the assessor misinterpreted my, my answers quite a fair bit. I think she maybe took advantage of the fact that um, I wasn't fully aware of what I was saying. I, at the time I thought it went really well. I thought we like, we, you know, we, sort of, we gelled like really well, but um, I think now reflecting upon it, I don't, I don't think it, it went well. Because they, they, they said to use certain advice, but I wanted to use a support worker and they, and they helped me fill in the form because I didn't understand it because I'm dyslexic. I didn't understand the form and they were the best people to, to understand how to fill the form in. I can't remember all the questions, but I can remember the mobility ones where I had to walk up and down to meant to touch my toes, I couldn't reach that. And also cross my hands like that. And I, my shoulders were hurting me at the time because of my tension that I had in my shoulders. And I, was, and I said that my shoulders were hurting doing that. Also I had to grip the assessor's hands really tight. I couldn't grip it tight. The assessment for PIP can be a hard area to understand. These videos will help you to see what Judith and Richard have been through. An assessor will visit Henry and conduct an interview, 
gaining knowledge on the nature of Henry's impediments. Many claimants prefer to have a close friend or family member remain by their side for moral support. PIP support depends on two areas of interest, mobility and daily living. The assessor will examine Henry's performance of specific tasks, such as opening a can of food. Every response from Henry and his performance translates as points. The final decision as to whether Henry will receive support will depend on how many points he scores. Ranging from 0 to 8, Henry will score low if he performs well at tasks. Support will definitely be required if he scores 8. Can I have to be honest here? I didn't know how to react um, when I when I found out I'd lost Pip. The, the report basically said essentially there was nothing wrong with me. And like what you, what you've got to understand is that um, sort of um, so ever since I've been diagnosed with autism, um, that's sort of, that's in a weird way that's been my safety net. That's sort of it's been a reason to why I found things difficult when I got that report. I um, I. It's sort of, I went back to sort of a pre autism area, area of my life where I didn't know I had it. And I, I just, I started to think it was just me. It, I was the problem. I, I thought I was, I didn't think I was good enough at anything. I received the award. What's the outcome of the assessment of PIP? I'm in the same position as I was with the DLA. Nothing's changed. It's just that it's just given me more security. That security has helped me relax more and knowing that bills are getting paid and helping me to live a normal life. After the interview, the assessor will hand Henry's case to the case manager, where the points will be calculated and the evidence examined. Within a few weeks, a decision will be made. If Henry's PIP claim is approved, both for daily living and mobility, then he shall receive government-funded financial support ranging from the standard rate of £77.65 per week or the enhanced rate of £142 per week. If, however, the case manager finds the claimant eligible for only one area, then they will receive a standard pay rate ranging from £22 to £83.10. In the unfortunate event Henry's claim is denied, his best course of action is to file an appeal and request a reconsideration of his claim. This will involve a hearing before a tribunal. Three members who will question the claimant about their claim, the reasons for the case manager's decision, and if Henry has legitimate grounds for complaint. If the tribunal finds the evidence compelling, they will reconsider Henry's claim, and in a few weeks, he will have their decision. If they deem the claim is successful, Henry will receive his benefits, but they could very well deny his claim again. In this case, Henry has little choice but to accept the tribunal's decision or repeat the entire claim process. Despite having different outcomes, Richard and Judith have come together to discuss their feelings on the PIP system. My sort of like my, my opinion on the um sort of the pit process is that it's, it's kind of it's sort of designed to sort of penalise those people um, who yeah, who have sort of like who yeah, who have improved with, with, with their life really and it, it's it's not really sort of designed to have like like those people who are, who are improving with it. It's kind of like in their eyes, if you improve to a certain point, you can obviously cope on your own and like you know you can move on. Yeah. Um, what I find with the assessment is that they they have a nurse. And they don't really specialise in your medicate your illness. From what I gather, they get someone like who sort of like vaguely knows what they're talking about, like you know, who sort of like covers everything, yeah. but they don't give you a specialist. It just it seems to me it's sort of like with stuff like like you know to do with mental health, like yeah. for some reason the rules that apply to physical health conditions like like don't apply it and I, I think that's that's the problem with sort of the PIP system, like in the initial stages, like, you know, when they assess you, they, they don't have the right people to do it, and then that's what causes, like, you know, a domino effect. I get the impression from them that, like, they, they, they're sort of, 
they're trying to sort of catch people out. They are. They then tend to twist things. Yeah. They try, they try to. They try when they when you say one thing on the on yeah. the uh, on the, the paperwork. Yeah. They try to twist things just and then get you confused. Like, and I'm one hand I can understand why they're doing it because like I I I think that with with me like. There would have been a point in the near future, like say in the next five years, where Germany didn't need it. Mm. But the fact is, when they took it away, I, I was still in a position where I needed it. Yeah. And like that's that's where I feel hard done by. I feel like everything in my life up to where I am, I've had to sort of fight for. And like, fight for. it literally felt like they were kicking me in the teeth. Turn it into point. yourself, don't you? Yeah. Um, because you've lost something that was that helped you financially. For but, me, for me, yeah. I have I, I attempted suicide in twenty sixteen, yeah. and because I lost everything, I yeah. lost. I, mean, I couldn't. I wasn't entitled to sign. I was working part time. Yeah, I wasn't entitled to sign on the doll because I never paid any stamps. Yeah, and I, or national insur- national insurance. I so said I lost my money. I lost my money. Lost my job. Yeah, I, I almost could have lost my home for a month. And uh, in the mean, and I attempted suicide because I said, "What's the point in living if I haven't got anything?" You know, yeah. and that's the same feeling. If I was to lose Pip, yeah, I would do the same thing. Yeah, like after I like after it sort of sunk in before I started making the documentary, I was alright with it. But then since sort I've of started making it, mm-hmm. I've been reflecting on it more, and I just think it's fucked me up a bit. It has, yeah. yeah. Following the filming of this documentary, Judith is still in receipt of PIP, but she lives in fear of losing her benefit when the time comes for reassessment. As for Richard, he's decided to share his story to help those who haven't been through the PIP process yet by making this documentary.